guys? You are listening to the Hats Chat Podcast, where I, Hats Mania, will be discussing different Yu-Gi-Oh! topics every week. And this week, I want to discuss, are Rank 3s becoming the new Rank 4s? Recently, we've been getting a lot of new generic Rank 3 support. And older cards have also been seeing a little bit of a comeback in variations of different decks to further boost the decks that are currently viable. Other decks like Burning Abyss are very viable in the current meta as well. Uh, I mean, a lot of you YouTubers are ranking Burning Abyss, as I said, as one of the top four decks, as high as top four, top five sometimes uh, in the meta right now, just because they're still very power powerful. Um, they are a rank three deck. That's what they do. That's what they do best. They're extremely consistent. And it utilizes arguably one of the better or best rank three monsters at the mo at the moment, which is Dante. Uh, as I said, loads of searching, and it's the most recent ban list in November. It still hasn't kept it out of the competitive scene. Still, people are worried about this deck. It's very hard to deal with this deck once it gets going. It still has access to quite a lot of things, especially with speedroids being um a bit of an engine for the deck as uh, as well as phantom knights speaking of phantom knights they're also popping up at the moment they recently won a uds under uh jeff jones and they're argu arguably they use some of the best rank three monsters um the best dante the deck likes to mill it really likes having trap cards in the graveyard it doesn't mind having the monsters in the graveyard um so dante is very much usable in the deck uh, it has a new Phantom Knight rank 3, which is uh, Phantom Knight of Breaksword, which gives a lot of options for the deck. And then Levier, it arguably uses Levier the best at the moment. Not even Cosmo, I think, uses Levier to the best potential, just simply because um, they really just want to banish and recycle that, um, that farm girl as much as possible. Uh, there are also a couple of other decks that like one notable other deck that really uses rank threes and a lot of people don't really know about it um they probably heard about it but they don't really know how the deck works at the moment and that is light sworn slash cancer sworn it's not overly uh competitive due to minerva only being a prize card but as soon as that becomes an actual card in the meta um as soon as it gets a regular release minerva minerva sworn is going to be one of the best decks at the moment just because it's just stupidly consistent and it gets to the cards as that the deck needs as fast as possible but the main point here is it utilizes probably one of the better level threes in the game lumina which helps the deck in loads of combos lumina can give you access to level threes level seven uh synchros um rank threes it, can, it just gives you a lot of things it puts other it puts dead light sworn cards in your hand into the graveyard so you can uh utilize what's in your graveyard and it can even put for example, you could, with Luminous Effect, send Dante to the graveyard to special summon Dante, as long as you have another Light Swarm monster in your graveyard. So it's just, it's very, very useful. So Lumina is definitely one of the better cards in that deck. It's also open to using Dante. As I said before, Dante is one of the better rank three monsters at the moment. Um, Light Swarms like to mill, but Dante is a controlled mill effect. So if the deck ha is starting to thin, like if they only have a couple cards left, maybe around 10, because they can get to that point, and they still don't have Judgment Dragon yet, they don't necessarily want to mill three cards on the top of the deck, and Dante can help them control that. There's also been a couple engines that have been popping up as well. Speedroids, Tacatumborg, and Terratop are a two-card engine for rank three plays. They're used in a variety of decks. And they're even open to synchro plays. It's not very usable usable at the moment just simply because it restricts them to only special summoning um wind synchro monsters but all the same it's still using a lot of decks including phantom knights of burning abyss as, as i said before and even non-competitive decks have been using it like ua uh ua use a card called mx uh invoker uh mx saber invoker to get out midfielder as fast as possible straight from the deck and i'll go into that card a little bit later there's also a Tour Guide Fiend Engine. Tour Guide of the Underworld um, has been a very good card for ages uh, since probably like the Teledad format, I would say. Uh, Tour Guide of the Underworld is one of the best level threes that the deck has. Notably, it's been used a lot in Burning Abyss because it doesn't give that uh, nasty little side effect that Burning Abyss has when uh, they have a monster that is not Burning Abyss on their side of the field. They can This card can be used in a variety of decks that use Fiends including, as I said, Burning Abyss, Burning Abyss Phantom Knight, because that is a variation. 
You could technically use it in Dark World, but people hate Dark World, so it's not really used. And even Fluff will use this card to a, to a degree. And I just want to bring up like the topic of discussion that you could have some mild success with Edge of Sabers uh, to help stack the deck with cards in hand. Uh, typically in combo with Dante, because then you can like put a card back on top with um, with scissors in the graveyard and and uh, it's it's a little bit complicated, but it can be it can be used to some success. Uh, it's not widely used, obviously, because it's it's not the most consistent thing, but it can be used, and that's the important thing here. Um, there's also a lot of old level three monsters that have been popping back up here and there, and have been used to some mild successes today as well. A lot of this generic rank three support was used when Phantom Knights were initially released online, in terms of like Yu-Gi-Oh Pro doing network when people were playing and testing it online. Since then, they haven't been used as much. Uh, notably, Marauding Captain, which is essentially a Tim Goldfish. Um, and it's searchable by Rota, which is interesting. Uh, Kage Mucha Knight, also searchable by Rota. And the same as Marauding Captain, but it's closer to Kage to Kage. And it's a dark monster, so it can be used with generic dark support as well. So that's that's interesting. It can be. It's a little bit more usable in a deck like... Um, like phantom knights because the deck is all dark warriors so that's that's an interesting little um synergy there you also have tg warwolf similar to kagamucha where if you normal summon a uh, a uh, level three like, well if you normal summon a level four lower monster with tg warwolf you can special summon it and uh it's arguably more searchable than the other cards uh that i said uh, marauding and kagamucha tanky still at three so you can easily search this card out and TG decks still have a, quite a bit of searchability. Um, it's not really, TG stun really isn't used anymore. Uh, simply because, like, <laughs> it's just not as fast as it once was. But it's still, it's still, like, out there. So, like, there's still a couple people playing it out there. Um, still not, not a good deck today in today's meta. There's also a card called Galaxy Worm. Now, you might have seen this before on my channel when I did a deck profile uh, for... Uh, digital bugs which we'll be getting later in the year i think we'll be getting that in uh shiny victories that archetype and galaxy worm is that de will definitely be used in that deck as soon as it's released not yet released in tcg and it was released as a jump promo in japan so they don't really have it on a y release either um they'll probably get it before we do but uh essentially what the card does it's when it's normal summoned it, it summons another copy itself from the deck which is not the best effect but it's still an instant rank three as long as the effect is off works really well with the digital bug archetype as i mentioned before but specifically cocoon denser um which is also yet to be released in the tcg if you don't know what uh to digital bug cocoon denser does uh basically you can choose one uh i believe it's like a one level three light insect monster from your graveyard and special summon it from the graveyard and then you have rank three fodder so that's really cool and however, uh, well not however, it can also be used to summon the digital bug, bug exist monsters, notably the rank 3 and rank 5 being the better ones. The rank 7 is going to be a little bit harder if the deck is, if this, if Galaxy Worm is used as an engine, just simply how it, how it works. Uh, but the rank 3 is actually pretty decent, the rank 5 is an okay card as well. There's also a couple of other generic rank 3s that have been getting a bit of a comeback actually. Uh, Phantom Knight of Breaksword is actually really good. Right now, it's it's a $40 card for a reason. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it's essentially a Scrap Dragon for rank 3s. I mean, rank 4s have um, Di Diamond Dire Wolf, which is an okay card, but usually it pops itself. Phantom Knight of Breaksword doesn't have to break itself due to its, due, like, similar to Diamond Dire, because Diamond Dire is the restriction where you can only, you have to destroy a beast monster on your side of the field or beast warrior. Um, versus like Phantom Knight where you can pop any card so you can play around with your back row you can play around with something else so uh, that's pretty interesting and then uh, it can make rank fours when it's destroyed so <laughs> uh, specifically in Phantom Knights and exclusively the Phantom Knights but uh, it's it's uh, yeah that's that's pretty interesting Dante Travel of the Burning Abyss also pretty good it's also getting a new reprint this week in the gold series set so um, that's pretty interesting and that's going to be a little bit more widely available to people. It's not going to be limited to the Mega Pack version and its original release, which are both secret rare. Um, there's another card called Constellar Hyades, which is actually, I think that's how it's said. And that can be used if a rank 3 light deck pops up, such as the um, Digital Bug Archetype, but that's a little bit more competitive. 
or even if a light rank three engine appears and uh give it gives access to tommy m7 uh, another constellar card which is a pretty decent card in itself and it has a pretty useful effect it's non targeting effect to put all of the opponent's monsters into defense position which arguably can be used in decks like uh, Metal Phosis. If you don't know what Metal Phosis is, it has a big boss monster that does double the piercing damage. So if you combine, if you can somehow figure out how to combine Hades with that card, that that's pretty insane right there. Um, you also have Super Quantum Mech Beast Grand Pulse. Uh, Grand Pulse is another recent release with Ring Raiders. It gives the user access to back row destruction. Uh, even more anyway the side effect of it not being able to attack while not having Xyz material is not really a problem either it's it's attack status relatively low for um a, like for a two card cost essentially um and i'm putting that in italics but like it's just like it's like it's just got a ridiculously high defense stat at 2800 so like it very not a lot of things can get over it at the moment notably uh dark destroyer or um the big guys with um in the uh, monarch decks, the the big the mega monarchs uh, can be used with a field spell to help get over that, or you can honest it away. But like, it, it's still it's still like a pretty de like harder. It's a harder card to get rid of. Uh, it's also you can also use downer magician with it if you so want to because once it's out of this Xyz material, it's pretty much useless. And then uh, it also outclasses uh, Ghost Trick Alucard. Alucard is no longer used because of Grand Pulse anymore. Uh, Alucard used to be like the the go-to back row destruction for uh, rank three decks, and now with Grand Pulse just beats it to the punch. Is where it doesn't require it to be set anymore. So you can even target um, Pendulum Scales with Grand Pulse. And Alucard you couldn't before because you can't set uh, Pendulum Scales. There's also Gorgonic Guardian. Uh, it's primarily used in Chronomaly. And it's consistently called one of the best cards in the deck. If you don't know who uh, Dzeef is on YouTube, he's uh, he's a relatively well-known uh, YouTuber. If you haven't heard of him, he's he's very good for no, for using rather like stun-ish decks. He uses anti-meta. Uh, he's known for using spirits and volcanics, but uh, recently he's been getting more into the mermail scene. Uh, however, he's been using a lot of Chronomaly decks as well very recently, and he, I would say he's probably one of the better YouTubers that you that knows how to use Chronomaly. Um, Chronomaly is a decent engine, and it's one of the better uh, decks that can bring out um, Cyber Dragon Infinity at the moment, just simply because they have run a lot of light machines that can get up to rank fives. But uh, more notably and more uh, central to this discussion is the rank three engine in the deck, which is Crystal Skull and Crystal Bones. Crystal Bones uh, and Crystal Skull. Crystal, Skull. Crystal Skull can discard himself as long as you're controlling a uh, Chronomaly monster to search out another Chronomaly monster. And then uh, Skull Bones, when you can special summon him if, if you control no monsters. And then uh, when he special summon that way, you get to special summon a Chronomaly monster from a graveyard, which would be skull and then you can rank three into gorgona guardian because they go th both rock monsters At the very least gorgona guardian can get monsters down to zero attack which is pretty notable and then on the flip side it can pop monsters with zero attack so <laughs> gorgona guardian is actually very useful in that it feeds off itself and um on top of that it can it's still it's it can be a problem to deal with there's also MX Saber Invoker. I talk, I mentioned this earlier. If there's ever an Earth Warrior deck that pops up as competitive at any point, this card will instantly become a staple in that deck. It's an e Telly for Earth Warriors. Yes, it can only get out level four or Earth Warriors from the deck, but still, it's an e Telly <laughs> essentially for them. And that, that right there, it's just insane. Uh, and then finally, for the generic rank threes, we have Totem Bird. Yes, it's more usable in for wind monsters, but we have a speed red engine, uh, as I mentioned before, and that's a wind engine. So it can, it's much easier access now than it was before. And it's essentially a dark bribe with no drawback. The drawback obviously being that the opponent gets to draw a card. Um, and if you're able to get it on the field and let it stay on the field, it has to be played around because there's only a few cards that can really respond to this card. And notably, that would be Solemn Strike. However, Solemn Strike is, if 
You make Totem Bird first turn. Solemn Strike's a little slow in responding to to Totem Bird. They can't Raigeki it away because Totem Bird can just get rid of it. it. It's not like, it's very, it can be a little bit annoying to deal with, just to say that. We also have some quick play sp uh, support as well that you wouldn't necessarily like respond to instantly as being uh, rank three support. Uh, Emergency Teleport, it's a ban worthy card and it will most likely get limited like Rhoda. Uh, it's, it's a better card than Rhoda because it instantly special summons from the deck. Uh, it does not waste the normal summon because it's special summons and it's a good in a variety of decks, especially with Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, which by the way is a level three psychic tuner. Um, becoming more accessible this week with the gold series released and if you saw the market watch with uh, ghost ogre ghost ogre went like dropped 50 percent in price with that uh with the release with the mention of it being in the gold series and right there that just shows you how ex more accessible this card is because people are really nervous that ghost ogre and snow rabbit is going to be a very easy card to come by in that set it also gives access to Super Quantum Pilot Blue Lair. That is a mouthful. Um, that card has been seeing a lot of play as well, notably in Monarchs. As, and Super Quantums have been topping a little bit more recently as well. I think the card guys have been showing uh, them topping. Uh, I think, believe, winning, actually, a, uh, an ARG event. So Blue Lair is definitely a card to watch out for, especially because it can shuffle other Quantums back into the deck. Um... There's also Super Hippo Carnival. Now this de this card has been hyped up so much with its uh, with its reveal in the OCG recently. It's coming to us later this year, I believe. It is coming to us in um, the the one the set that's coming out in the summer, not our spring release set, which would be uh, our spring release is Shining Victories. Uh, I forget what, I think it's TDLI, TDIL, I think that's the abbreviated name for the one that's coming out in July. Um, but Super Hippo Carnival is insane. It can summon a Performa Pal Hip Hippo, a level 3 er Earth Monster, which is notable, from anywhere but the Banished Zone. So, arguably, you only need one Hip, hip, hip Hippo. It's, <laughs> it's also immune-ish to a variety of summon negation or destruction. Most notably, Bottomless Trap Hole due to uh, Hip Hippo's low attack. It's only got 800 attack, so it gets around that. It's very hard to banish this card unless you're going out of the out of your way to banish it with like an effect. Um, you do not you're not required to summon the Hippo tokens as of right now, as of like the current ruling on the card. Um, if you don't know what Super Hippo Carnival does. Basically, you get a special summon a Hip Hippo from the graveyard hand or or deck, and then you get to summon as many Hip Hippo to or like Hippo Carnival tokens. I call them Hippo sluts in the anime, but like you get to summon as many of those tokens you want onto the field, and you don't have to do it because like like it, like it just says you can. Obviously, you can is voluntary so you don't have to do it and if you did you you're locked out of using your extra deck for the turn so why would you do that uh the the extra deck is arguably the best uh most utilized part of the game at the moment so uh that side effect of the card the fact that it's optional is very useful you can also use the stall if you so wanted to but more often than not people are going to use this card to get advantage uh, it also gives that much easier access to Naturia Beast and Barkeon. Uh, Beast and Barkeon both require an Earth Tuner and Earth um, uh, Earth uh, non-tuner monster. So Hippo is a non-tuner Earth monster. All you need is a level three to Earth Tuner, and that's not really that hard to come by. There's quite a few. I think Drill Synchron is a level three. So <laughs> right there, that's that's not that hard. And again, it only requires one hip hippo in the deck hand or graveyard to go off. It doesn't take up a lot of space in the deck. It's a four card engine, which is pretty nice. And uh, it's it sucks to draw into hip hippo, obviously. So that's why you only have to run one. But it's not the worst thing in the world. You don't cry as hard if you draw into like blue layer. This will definitely supersede like a blue lever layer uh, engine in terms of how useful it is. I mean, three super hippo carnival and one hip hippo. I would argue is a lot better than three emergency teleport and a blue layer in a deck utilizing rank threes 
so yeah hippo carnival is definitely going to supersede that especially if itali gets limited or banned in the future so that is it for this discussion if you have anything to add please comment in the set in the comment section below uh if you're listening to this on youtube and uh as always guys have a nice day oh, 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 oh.